Hi, this is Cheryl Peterson with the Community of Christ Scientist. Women's History Month brings me to Mary Baker Eddy, a 19th century leader in religion and mind study. In the field of religion, Mary Baker Eddy taught a God of love, a God of truth and healing. Her teaching and preaching gained in popularity rapidly at the turn of the 20th century. But in the field of mind study is where Mary began. I'll start with a little background, not only because most people have never heard of her, but also to offset the false information available online that is tied to Mary Baker Eddy. Mary Baker would, was born in year 18, 1821, the sixth of six children in New Hampshire, into a prominent family of the community that valued education. Her life was simple and easy compared to most. It was 1841 before she lost a brother and experienced the feelings of a hard death. Two years later, Mary wed her first husband at the age of 21, but he died six months later. She was pregnant and moved back in with her parents. After the birth of her son, Mary's parents helped her raise the child until her mother died in 1849. Her father's new wife didn't want to take care of Mary's son, so the child moved in with a foster family. For reference, Mary showed little independence despite the fact that her sister, Martha, was also a widow with two daughters, and Martha single-handedly raised her daughters. Mary showed little independence despite the fact that she could have gained employment from her other sister, Abigail, a co-owner with her husband, of the Grand Tilton Mills, the employer, the employer of many women. But to Mary's credit, there is no record of her interfering with the raising of her son, allowing the Foster family to raise him into a fine member of society. In 1853, Mary wed Daniel Patterson, a dentist. This marriage provided reality checks. Daniel was born the fifth of seven children. A sister died at the age of three. His father died when Daniel was eight. When Daniel was 10 years old, two of his older brothers drowned. A few years later, his older sister died when giving birth. The infant also died. And when Daniel was in his 20s, his mother died. Despite the losses, he got educated, left the farm, and became an expert dentist. After wedding Mary, they lived away from her family. Although Mary seemed to experience a greater magnitude of physical and emotional challenges, some turning points were definitely found. They didn't move back to her family. Daniel contacted mind cure doctor Phoenix Quimby and requested mental treatment for Mary. But the American Civil War broke out and Daniel went south to support the Union in 1862. He was captured as a civilian prisoner and after, but after seven months of incarceration, which included bad food and illness, Daniel escaped. He walked 400 miles to Union lines and was sent home to Mary by General Robert Milroy. At the time Daniel was making his way home, Mary traveled to receive treatment from Dr. Quimby and became very interested in the doctor's mind power philosophy because she felt better all the way around, mind, body, and spirit. All of this is relevant, life-changing. Mary was not more alone, more abandoned, nor more distraught than a millions of other people. World events and the people around us make sure we can't go back to normal or what we think is normal. Mary and Daniel moved to Lynn, Massachusetts, closer to Dr. Quimby. But remember, she lived a very sheltered life read a lot of books, wrote some articles for the newspapers, and now lived with a husband who probably had post-traumatic stress. Yet Daniel restarted his successful dentist business and supported Mary while she traveled, 
leaving him for weeks and months at a time to learn about mind power. In July of 1864, just before the war ended, not just before, but before the war ended, Daniel got real sick during record heat. From this point on, he is found more often in the cooler New Hampshire weather during the summers. But records show he financed Mary while she kept traveling and studying and experimenting with spiritualism, transcendentalism, brain study, mesmerism, and massage. Mary designed a teaching system on the power of mind. In 1867, she taught a man her method of healing, and they went into business together to heal others with truth talk and massage. But the business failed. Mary continued living her freer lifestyle, moving around, meeting, and teaching other people. And from 1870 to 1872, she partnered with Richard Kennedy, again to heal others with truth talk and massage. They were very successful. Although Mary received alimony after divorcing Daniel in 1873 on paper, for her to divorce her mind from Richard Kennedy took another decade and a half, giving evidence of a formidable love-hate relationship. Mary wrote a book, but presumably couldn't get it published until after admitting, in print, the power of the misleading negative influences of human mind and how to protect oneself from their bad effects. She inserted her words into her Science and Health, and in future revisions used Richard Kennedy, aka Mr. K, as the scapegoat for evil thinkers. Nonetheless, Mary's book was monumental in the detailed description of the human mind's workings and mind power. It clarified that the human mind and body are one and the same thing, incapable of resolving its own problems. Mary's book described divine mind and its manifestation as the reality attainable to consciousness now. It showed readers how to read thoughts, filter out misleading suggestions, and take on thoughts of substantial goodwill and health. Using religious language, Mary pioneered and broadcast the tangible benefits of Christ's mind and spirituality in human life. In 1877, Mary wed Asa Eddy, and they started a church. She continued teaching what she had by then dubbed Christian Science, and Mary's students started branch churches around the nation. One thing that sticks out, Mary never sat still. Although clearly pointing to Christ Jesus as her leader and way shower, Mary didn't show signs of repeating Jesus' words as an okay thing to do. Words change meanings. Organizations change meaning. She wrote her own words, revised, reinvented, organized, and reorganized. She seemed to include rather than exclude. Hypocrisy was rebuked every time Mary Baker Eddy revised her science and health, which she did hundreds of times before she died in 1910. She acted on the truth that if a person can read from a modern version of the Bible, they very well can read from a revised science and health. Blind arrogance and the church police were rebuked every time Mary Baker Eddy revised the church manual. She acted on the truth that churchy rules are not the same thing as God's rules. Mary Baker Eddy wasn't perfect, far from it. During the 1870s, she wrote for public consumption some nasty things about other people, Richard Kennedy and suffragist Victoria Woodhull, for examples. But something changed after her third husband died in 1882. There was less blaming others, less moralizing. Mary Baker Eddy moved. She started a publishing house, a metaphysical college, and helped engineer the building of a church edifice in Boston. She closed down that which projected impracticality. 
Was her movement the effect of grief, contrition, humility, or genuine love? Was it when she began honestly living what she preached and relied on God instead of herself or other men for her guidance and happiness? Was it because the greater population of people were losing interest in the common teaching of God as dogmatic and punishing? Was it simply because Mary Baker Eddy couldn't stop mass consciousness and individuals from learning how to think for themselves and control their thoughts and actions with love and truth? Was it because there is no greater power in control that constantly unfolds goodness, and although human egos try to stop that goodness, it can't? Is it because divine spirit is a valid, substantial motivator that allows us to fight for life and truth and love? I don't know, but probably all those above. One thing I think I know is that women in history, Mary Baker Eddy being one, are natural and amazing contributors to healing intentions and actions.